change you. Give God praise for the holy word of God. Hallelujah. Come into a sanctuary near you right now. Praise the Lord. Let us pray and let us get started. Father, we thank you, bless you, yeah. praise you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for being the God who gives me breath in my lungs. Oh, I don't take it for granted. I do not take it for granted. Breath in my lungs. Hallelujah. Brain to think, a mouth to speak, ears to hear, and eyes to see, feet to walk, legs to stand on, Lord, heart to beat. Oh, I wish somebody praised the Lord this day. I'm just so grateful. So grateful, Lord. So grateful that you sustain me, Lord. And now let it be all of you and none of me in operation as I teach this message. And I thank you that it's going to be a life-changing message for those who hear. Raise up your right hand and say, I'm ready to receive the life-changing, life-bettering word of God. And I'll walk in what I'm taught in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord another hand. Clap. Come on. Amen. In the book of Luke, <clears throat> chapter number 11, we find um, our foundational scripture, starting at verse number one. And let's go to the, to the slide and let's, uh, let's look at it. It says, Luke chapter 11, verse number one. It says, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And then Jesus answered in verse two. So he said to his disciples, when you pray, say, say it with me, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Church of Teaching from the Life, Building Life, Blessing Life, Better series entitled Your Will Be Done. Your Will Be Done. This passage of scripture uh, is in Luke 11, but it's also in Matthew chapter 6. And uh, I tell you, I don't think there's been a greater passage of scripture that has impacted and changed my life. Uh, Matthew 6, uh, that chapter is a life-changing chapter. Yeah. It is it is Jesus' uh, theology. It, it is his uh, kingdom, basic kingdom teaching. Yeah. And so we spent a lot of time in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, we're teaching this series, Your Will Be Done. And this is lesson number 6. This is lesson number 6. And um, you can entitle or subtitle today's lesson, Empowered to Be a Blessing. Empowered to Be a Blessing. <coughs> now, um, this is Pentecost Sunday. For those of you who don't know what that means, Pentecost is a, 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 a Greek or a Roman word that basically means 50. And that number is very important uh, because once again, I told you, God is a God of order. Once you get this, it changes your life. He's not a God of randomness. He's not a God of willy-nilliness. He does everything in order and everything precisely. So in the Old Testament, uh, God introduced what the Jews call Passover. And that was in the spring. That's when they took the Passover lamb and spread, spread the blood on the doorpost and the angel of death passed over their house and they were able to get out of Egypt. 50 days, somebody say 50 days. 50 days. Say it with me, say 50 days. 50 days. After Passover was the time that God gave the law. On Mount Sinai, God gave the Ten Commandments 50 days after the Lamb's blood was shed. Now we fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus, the Lamb of God, dies on the exact day of Passover. He's the Passover Lamb. 50 days after that, God gives the Spirit. 
50 days after the blood was shed in the Old Testament, God gave the law, the word. New Testament, 50 days after the Lamb's blood was shed, God gave the Spirit. Come on, tell me preacher's name. He gave the Spirit. Exact same time. So in the, in the Old Testament, it was all about the word, the law. In the New Testament, it's all about the Spirit. Yes, sir. You can even say it like this, the Spirit of the law. The word is not the word is not void. It's just fulfilled by the right spirit. You have to know the motivation for what you do. All the law is summed up in what? One word. Love. The whole law is fulfilled with what? Love. love. So here we are now in a time where God has poured out his spirit. But here's, here's, here's where we're gonna go. We're gonna see how this all relates to us. Say empowered, empowered. to be a blessing. What I want you to get today out of today's message is that is simply this. Your whole life is here to be a blessing. Yeah. You have been blessed to be a blessing. And unfortunately, somewhere along the way, we got this thing twisted. We did. We think that we're here just to get a blessing. Did you hear what I said? We think we're here just to get it. And there's nothing wrong with being blessed. But I need you to understand the order and what, what, what the will of God really is. Really, God didn't put us here uh, just to go around and always be looking to, to, to get. He really already blessed us. And our job is to give. Amen. In the world, everybody wants to get. And, and even worse than that, they want to take it's like America. They took this. Come on, somebody. Let's, 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 can we keep it real? You know, what, they, what they're doing in Ukraine right now? Come on, now. Hey, come on, man. They, and the world is all about taking. Somebody say there's takers and there's givers. And the givers, that's the kingdom of God. Everybody else is trying to take it. they just trying to take, take everything that's the, I used to say everything's not nailed down. They try to take that too. Even stuff that's nailed down. They try. I mean, just think about the history of the world. Yes, sir. People just taking everything. Yeah. Oh, this looks like some nice land. Let's take this. Right. Yeah. This state right here. Yeah. California. Yeah. This one. This wasn't. A, this wasn't the thirteen colonies. This wasn't the United States. You know. You know the the the, the, the uh, indigenous people had it. Mexicans had it. Mexico had it. Look at those old maps. Yes. This is part. That's why you see all these names: Santa Barbara, San Francisco, yes. Santa Ana. Yes. All of these names are here. Why? Because the Mexican people were here long before. Come on. And somebody came in and said, "This is a beautiful state. We're taking this." <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. Can I get an amen? Oh, yeah. All right, listen. Amen. So somebody say, "I'm a giver." I'm a giver. Say, "I've been given." To give. to give. I've been blessed, I've been blessed. to be a blessing. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you what your purpose in life is. That's what your purpose in life is. You're blessed to be a blessing. You're empowered to be a blessing. Let's, let's check it out. I'm prove it out to you. In the book of Matthew, chapter number three, Jesus arrives in the wilderness in a place called Judea, which is southern Israel. And he's there to be baptized in the water by John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. All right, John the Baptist doesn't want to baptize him because he feels that he's not worthy, and in the natural he's not, but the Lord's like, look, you're the best I got. You, 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 you set apart from the world. You're eating uh, locusts and honey, and you, you, you don't you know, wear clothes off the rack, or yeah. you're in camel hair. You're just, you're just sacrificing and sanctifying yourself for the Lord and you're preaching the kingdom of God. He right. says, you, you, you're good to go. And you're Jesus' cousin too. He said, you're good to go. You, you baptize him. He said, no, no, I can't baptize you. Jesus said, no, no, no. Suffer to be such. He said, for such fulfilling the righteousness of God. In other words, do this because this is what my father wants done. You're not baptizing me because I have sinned. You're baptizing me because I need to be empowered and start my ministry. I need to be empowered to be a blessing. Be, listen to me, there, this, this is the most, one of the most important parts of the, the series, of this message today. 
I don't know if you really understand this, but uh, Jesus, his name in Hebrew is Yeshua. Before he was born, he was the word of God. Right. And the word was always with God. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? So Jesus was the, is God, and he was always with God as the Word of God. Now, listen. Say Jesus. Jesus. Always was God. And this is where a lot of people got it messed up. They think, in fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses think that Jesus was created. Just because he was born, they think he was created. He wasn't created. Jesus was incarnated. The Bible says in John 1, 14, the word became flesh. So here's what I want you to get. I, I know I'm getting a little deep on you, but you got to stay with me. When Jesus, who was the word, who always was with God, and who always was God, when he became flesh, or he took on uh, a fleshy body, First of all, as a little baby and then growing up as a man, he was son of man. He was born of a woman, but he was son of God. And because he was son of God, he never ceased to be God. Although in his earthly ministry, he divested himself of his power. In other words, from the time that he was born, it was God's plan and Jesus' agreement to come in as a human being. He did no miracles until he was baptized in this, in this uh, Judean uh, walk and lake. Yes. He did no miracles until he received his baptism. And when the Holy Spirit came upon him and he was baptized in the Holy Ghost or in the Holy Spirit, from that point on, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he could do miracles. You say, why is that? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Meaning, I'm not only the way to the Father, I'm the way or the example to you from the Father. I'm here to show you what you're supposed to be like as a God man or a God woman in the earth. You're born of the flesh, but once you get baptized and, and once you get the Holy Ghost power, then you can do some supernatural things even as Jesus did. Did you hear what I said? He, he didn't heal anybody until he got Holy Ghost power. But once he got Holy Ghost, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Somebody said prove it to us, Pastor. All right, here we go. He, he, was in, he was in the River Jordan. He was in Judea. He got baptized. And the Bible says that, that the Holy Spirit came on him like a dove. And that's called the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes on you like that, you are baptized with Holy Ghost power. You are anointed to do supernatural things. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Yes. So Jesus, once he submitted to the will of his father, because remember, John the Baptist didn't want him to be baptized. And Jesus told him, no, allow it to be because this is the will of my father. He knew that the father wanted him to be baptized, not to be forgiven of sin because Jesus had no sin. Because if he had had sin, he, he, he couldn't have been the sacrifice for our sins. Uh -huh. He was baptized to, to declare the beginning of his ministry with power. So once he submitted his will to the Father, the Father empowered him to be a blessing for us. Amen. Once Jesus submitted his will to the Father and said, okay, I'll be baptized, the Father empowered him with Holy Ghost power to be a blessing for us. He didn't empower him with Holy Ghost power just so he could... Uh, prance around and say, I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it. No, no, no. He, he didn't prance around and say, look at me, I'm the king, I'm the king, I got all power. He didn't do that. In fact, when they tried to make him a king, he said, no, 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 no it's not my time yet. No, 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 don't give me any accolades of king yet. But he went around doing supernatural things because he was blessed and empowered to be a blessing. Let's, let's turn to it. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Here it is. 
Acts chapter 10, verse 30. Look, look, look what this says. Look what happened after Jesus, this meager carpenter who had never done any miracles before. What happened after he got Holy Ghost power? It says, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus. Ah, see, he was anointed. Before he was anointed, no miracles. After he was anointed, what? Miracles. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing. Healing how many? How many? Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. That shows you where sickness comes from. All who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. My point is, the whole purpose of his ministry, leading up to, of course, his death, where he would, you know, pay the price for our sins. But all those three years, that's it right there. He, he got anointed in that river Jordan in Judea with Holy Ghost power. And it said he went about doing good everywhere he went. And, and, and people were sick. They Listen, they didn't have HMO, PPO, Kaiser, Cigna. Uh, you, come on, name some other ones. They didn't have none of that stuff. Them folks was tore up from the flow up. You, you think we got some sickness now? Them people were so sick. And they found out that, they found out that Jesus was a healer? Can you? They didn't need social media or nothing else. They found out Jesus was a healer. Get out of my get out of my way. So what do you think that? Do, do you really think that the woman with the 12 year issue of blood was the first one who said, let me test the infant yeah. garment? Yeah. Study your Bible. Yeah. She did that because she heard that some other people had touched oh, the infant yeah. garment. I can prove it. She heard some other people. She said, oh, here, all you got to do is touch it. Girl, I'm gone. Choo! I'm yeah. gone. Yeah. See, if, if, if I, I, I if I can just, I'm gonna make. See, what did I tell? What did I tell you? When something's important, it's not about you uh, 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 finding the time. What do you do? Make you make the time. Make you up there and you bleed. Now listen, I'm not a woman, and I'm not. I ain't never experienced a cycle. But I'm gonna tell you, the only cycle I know about is a is a wash and a rinse cycle. But let me just tell you this. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I have a wife, I have a daughter, I have a mama, and I, I, I have a, you know, an indirect knowledge of these things. And i tell you one thing, if I'm that woman, and it's 12 years, and she's flowing like just constant flow, she like, get out of my way. I'm getting up in there, I'm getting my healing today. And some of y'all, we be talking about, when the altar's open for healing, you be sitting back there, come on, I don't know, I'm going up there, somebody might think something. <laughs> You better, you better tell, you better tell somebody. Excuse me, excuse me, and get out your seat and come press up on the, his 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 garment and get your healing. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yes, I'm playing around. All right. So what we found out today is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our chief example, he actually divested himself of his power. The power that he had in glory when he came down here. But then it was the plan of the father that when he was 30 years old, he would go and get baptized by John the Baptist. And it wasn't John the Baptist. It was the obedience of Jesus that brought the blessing. Because remember when he got baptized in, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3, a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm what? Well, well please. See, 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 see if. Yeah. But if Jesus hadn't done that, God wouldn't have said that. Right. See, you have to, I'm, oh, I'm trying to help somebody today. Good Lord, why do we do this as a church? Why do we, it's like we lose our mind when it comes to things in the kingdom. Listen, you don't work, you don't get paid. Right. Well, there you go. <laughs> why do we treat God differently? We sit up there talking about, now look, you got to, I need you to pay me first. And if you, you know, you do that, then, then maybe I'll start acting right. Where God is like, no, you step to me first. Uh -huh. You go down there in that river uh -huh. and you dunk down in there just like that man. Uh -oh. Just like that man, uh, uh, Haman. Haman. Uh, uh, Naaman. 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 Just like Naaman. Naaman had leprosy. Right. He had leprosy. And he couldn't get rid of the leprosy no matter what. And, and he had... Uh, uh, he had gotten captured some of the, the Jewish people and he captured this uh, Jewish uh, maid 
And she said, oh, my Lord, if you would just uh, go to Elijah, he can help you. He can help you because he's got, he's got the anointing. Oh, my. Yes. See, oh, see my. again? Oh. See, what does Jesus, even in the Old Testament, God was showing you, he had Elisha. He had Elijah and Elisha. Yeah. And, it, and, and he put his spirit on mere men, yeah. just like us. Once you get that, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, power comes on you. Power comes on you. Oh, and, he, and she said, she said, you know, if you just go to you go to Elijah, uh, he can heal you that. Yeah. And he took she talked the general Naaman into it. And he went down there. But when he went down there, Elijah wouldn't see him. He knocked on the door and said, I'm you know, I'm big, I'm the man, and I need you to see me because this little woman said you can help heal me. And Elijah sent his servant out there and said, to tell the man to go down there and, and dip himself uh seven times in that same little river, you know, the little George River. He got mad because it didn't make any sense. Somebody say, faith doesn't make sense. Say, faith makes a difference. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So he got mad. The man wouldn't come out to see him. And then the instructions he gave him, he said, well, I, we have great rivers in Syria. Why didn't he tell me to go down there? Well, if that was the case, you should have gone down to that river in Syria. Then you don't want these healing. That's how we are. We keep trying to tell God how to bless us. Yeah. God tell you, God tell you, you get blessed through Jesus Christ, and we want to talk about Muhammad, Confucius, and, and the Latter day Saints, and everybody else. Just do what God is, somebody say, just do it. Say, do what he says. And so finally, they convinced the general, do what the man said. And he went, he dipped himself seven times in the little old Jordan River, and he got healed of his leprosy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so Jesus shows us that he obeyed the Father, went to the little d dirty Jordan River. In fact, we've been over there, and the Jordan River is nothing. I mean, it's just in, I, I, there that day it may have been more. But when I went there, I got a picture of us putting our feet in the Jordan River. But again, it's not by sight, it's by faith. And so Jesus gives us the example that if even if you are just a human being with no power, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can receive Holy Ghost power to do supernatural things. All right, that was uh, example number one. Let's go example number two. In the book of Acts, chapter number one, the disciples are waiting in Jerusalem, in the upper room in Jerusalem, and they're waiting for a different type of baptism. Uh, Jesus was baptized in water, but, but and then eventually when he went into the water, the Holy Ghost came down on him. But the, but the baptism that John had been baptized was a water baptism. But now Jesus is telling them, remember that baptism that I got? Remember when the Holy Ghost came on me? Right. He said, I need you to wait in Jerusalem for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, they had every reason not to wait. Yeah. Jesus Jesus was, was, was getting ready to go up to heaven. Yeah. Uh, they were afraid of being caught yeah. by the Romans. And plus that they had been with Jesus for three years. They wanted to go home. Yeah. They, want, they didn't live in Jerusalem. They lived on the north side. They lived in Galilee. They yeah. wanted to go home. But Jesus said, no, no, you can't go home. You need to wait. In a few days, the, the, the baptism with the Holy Ghost is going to come down on you. So somebody said, thank God they waited. God. Somebody said, thank God they waited. God, they waited. Somebody said, if. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, if we get on the right side of if, you're going to see all kind of miracles and things happening. God is just waiting on you to do it. He's waiting on you. All right, so then once the disciples submitted their will to Jesus, because they had a will, and they could have said, you know, Jesus, I, we love you and everything. We know you pay for our sins, but we tired. We've been with you for three years. But, you know, some people think that, that uh, them folk didn't have family. Sure, they had family. You know, Peter was married. Of course he was buried. One of the, one of the first uh, miracles that Jesus performed was he healed Peter's mother-in-law. Yeah, she was sick. He, remember he said, he piled Jesus, went about doing good, healing all those who were yeah. oppressed by the devil. Yeah. So <clears throat> Peter was married, and so he had forsaken his marriage for three years. He's ready to go home. But Jesus said, no, you got to remain here in Jerusalem. And they did. All right, now watch this. Watch what happened after they got filled with the Spirit. That 
50th day that I told you about, the day that we're celebrating today, Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, they stayed in Jerusalem. And 10 days, Jesus told them to wait on the 40th day, and the Spirit fell 10 days later on the 50th day. And the Bible says they all were filled with the Spirit and began to speak in new tongues. But more importantly, they got they received Holy Ghost what? Power. Look what happened. It said once they submitted to the will of Jesus, Jesus empowered them to be a blessing for them. He didn't empower them to just rule and reign and walk around talking about everybody wash my feet. In fact, earlier in the, uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, they asked him about that. At this time, will, we, uh, will you restore power to Israel so we can have our kingdom and we can sit on the left and the right and say, er, no, stop all that. He said, you're going to get some power right. He said, you receive power, Acts 1-8, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you to be witnesses of me. Witnesses of me. Why are you getting this power? So that wherever you go, people will see, they'll know. Uh, this, is, this is a real interesting point. That's why, there's the answer to the question right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's the answer to the question right there. Why is it that the first miracle, why is it in the first miracle when Jesus, when, when, when Peter put his hand on that lame man and he said, look on us. He said, look on us. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. He said, look on us. When that man looked on them, you know what he saw? He saw the anointing. Yeah. He saw Holy Ghost. He saw the light. He said, and he said, rise, get up off your bed and walk. In that moment before he pulled his arm up, that man saw that they were with Jesus. He saw the anointing and the power of God, and his faith was activated. And when Jesus put him up, immediately his legs got straight. And he not only got up and stood, he was dancing and leaping and praising God. Give God some praise right there. Because when you get the power of the Holy Spirit, it becomes visible to people. Yeah. They can see. How many of you all have ever been somewhere and people say, there's something different about you? It's a, it's a light on you. It's something, you, it's, it's something about you. When, 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 when you, 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 you you're a Christian, you're a man of God, you're a woman of God, something about you. You know, you know, all this stuff going on in the world and everybody walking around with a scowl on their face and looking at but you just got the, you all looking like you done had 10 Happy Meals. What, 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 what's up with you? You just looking all happy and everything's good. Why? Because of the anointing. It's the anointing. And so he says, watch this, they get anointed. And Acts chapter 5, verse 12 says, it says, and through the hands, Acts chapter 5, 12 says, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Once they got anointed, remember what happened when Jesus got anointed? Yeah. How God anointed him with power, and he went about doing good, doing what? Healing all of those that yeah. were oppressed by the devil. Once he got anointed, he was able to heal the sick. That's right. The same Jesus who just looked carpenter, nobody knew who his name was, anything. But but God wanted to show that 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 when I anoint a man, he moves from the natural to the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Now, since you didn't believe it, you said, Well, yeah, but that was the Son of God. That was Jesus. So, uh -huh. you know, I mean, that was Jesus. Okay, what about these guys? These were the ones who betrayed him. Well, these were the ones who forsook Jesus. We know that Judas betrayed him. But Peter did what? Denied him three times. And the rest of them did what? Forsook him. They all ran away. But Jesus said, that's okay, I forgive you. But if you wait on the Holy Ghost on, uh, at Pentecost, when this power comes down on you, you're going to receive power to be my witnesses. In other words, wherever you go, you're going to represent me. Yeah, yeah. If I was around, and when I went around, and, 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 and I touched people, they were healed, he said, well, guess what? You're going to do the same thing. He right. said, and the works that I do, come on, somebody, tell them, talk to me today. John chapter 14, and the works that I do shall you do also. And then he said, and greater works than these. Some people misinterpret uh, that to mean a, a greater type of work than Christ. It doesn't mean that. In the original language, it means right, right. greater quantity right. of works. If more of us are doing the works of Christ, that means greater works. Yeah. More miracles, more healings, more casting yeah. out devils, more, 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 more. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. That's right. We can continue the works of Christ, even raising folk from the dead. Yeah. That was a work of Christ. Might be somebody on that on that hospital table 
that look like that's done for them, but 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 if it, it, it's not their time and you got the anointing, you go on and call that thing and, and tell them, Lazarus, raise up, call up my name and say, raise up. Because why? It's the listen, the Bible says the same anointing that raised God from the dead, the same spirit that raised God from the dead, Romans chapter 8, is on the inside of the believer. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. Somebody say, not a different spirit. Not a different spirit. Say, not another Holy Ghost. Not another Holy the same spirit same. that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. Somebody say, you better watch out. Say, you say you fully loaded. Man, you walking around with all this power and you don't even realize that? You walking around with this Holy Ghost power, especially if you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost. In other words, not only have the Holy Ghost in you, but have the Holy Ghost come on you. All right? So then, so then let the, so so we know now that with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Jesus was able to do many miracles. Yeah. We know now that with the anointing of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, mere men who actually disappointed Jesus, right. but who had to be forgiven by Jesus, oh, no. once the anointing came on them, they were able to do what? Woo! Signs and wonders. Well, how many signs and wonders? Many. Many. Many signs and wonders. That means many supernatural things. Yes. Like the like the raising of that man who was born uh, uh, lame. Yes. He was lame from birth. Yes. Everybody knew it. He was begging at the at the you know at the church door every 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 uh, Sabbath. He was begging, begging, begging. Everybody knew who he was. Uh -huh. They tried to say, wait a minute now, is that really? Oh no no. Everybody said, no, that's the guy. That's him. We know him. We've never seen him walk. No, 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 no. But, 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 but. And then it was so powerful that people said, Peter raised him from the dead. Raised him from, the, from being laid. And Peter said, no, it wasn't me. It was Christ working through me. It was me working through Christ. It was me. It was the, it was the power and the authority of the name of Christ. But yes, it was working through Peter. Do you hear what I'm saying? Say, 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 it involves you, but it's not you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the person, but it is that believer under the power and the authority, under the authority of Christ and under the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the authority of Christ's name and the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the authority of Christ's name and the power of the Holy Spirit. The same thing that the apostles used. You can use. Y'all yes. not hearing me today. Yes. The same thing the apostles used to view. So then watch this. So then watch this. Now, 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 now. This all comes down to one thing. What about us? What's the name of that series? This is us. What about us? We know that the anointing caused Jesus to, to do miracles. We know that the anointing that came on Pentecost caused the apostles to do miracles. What about us? I'm so glad you asked. There was a condition before the anointing came at that, at that Jordan River in Judea. Jesus had to obey what the Lord told him to do. If he did that, then the Father was well pleased and the anointing came. Same thing. The apostles had to obey Jesus. If they did what he said to do, then the anointing came. Well, I got news for you. The same thing is true with us. Once we submit our will to the Father. Yes. The Father empowers us to be a blessing for others. Yes. Yes. Once we submit our will to the Father, the Father empowers us to be a blessing for others. This, this is the purpose of why we're living. This is what we're here for. Literally, this is what we're not, I, I, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, we're not here uh, I mean, I'm not against anybody becoming a millionaire, that, but we're not here for that. That's really not what we're here for. Because if, if, if being a millionaire was the goal, then, then Jesus, you would have seen in his life that he was a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? You would have seen that that was the focus. So right. He got this business. He had this much money. He didn't need that. He, he just needed the anointing to do what he was supposed to do. Why? Because love is an intense desire to please the Father to, by doing something for the benefit of others. Yes, sir. Of others. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, there was a time, well, first of all, there was a time in my life where uh, I was a public servant, okay? That, just the title right there says I'm serving the public. I was a politician. I was a public servant. But 
But even though I was a public servant, what was at the top of my mind was, how can I get reelected? Uh -huh. How can I move up higher and higher? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's really what's wrong with this country right now. The people are, who are in the office, they're not thinking about right. the people, the children who are getting killed right. in the schools and all this other stuff. They're just thinking about, well, I got this gun lobby over here, and they're helping me get reelected, and I can't go against them yeah. even if they kill my own child. I mean, what kind of sick mess is that? Are y'all hear what I'm saying? That's sick. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is what God, this is why this series is so important. Not my will, but your will be done. You have to die to yourself in order to serve God. You have to, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. You have to, you have to be willing to do what God is telling you to do. So what I'm saying, there was a time when I was a public servant but, but my values were not like they are right now. Uh -huh. In other words, I was, I was selfish. Right. Uh -huh. I was selfish. I was right. thinking about yeah. my career. And I was thinking about, you know, what, how high I can go and all these other stuff. And, and, and since the Lord, that song changed, since the Lord changed my life, yeah. the, what the Lord did is he said, you, he said, you, you have now entered into true prosperity. Your life is about not what you can achieve, your life is about what you can give. Amen. Your life, I'm, I'm looking, and listen, let me tell you something. Since I have, have been changed and converted, I know I'm blessed. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a blessing everywhere I go. Right. I'm not talking about going to get a blessing. I'm talking about I'm going to be a blessing. Yeah. Everywhere I go, I'm going to be a blessing. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Okay, uh, I used to be like this. So then I got into, I got into uh, really uh, giving my life to the Lord. And, and once I did that, uh, I said, you know, Lord, uh, I'm going to be a blessing wherever I go. So while I'm working as a pastor, you know, I'm working full time. And everywhere I go, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing if I go to the grocery store. I'm a blessing if I'm in uh, the bank line, wherever. And I had this one little part of me, this one little part that I was holding back. You know what that part was? Vacation. I said, now Lord, now you know everywhere I go, everywhere I go, Spencer, I'm, I'm going to be a blessing to you, Father. Everybody, I mean, there's not a place that I won't go where I'm not empowered to make a difference and won't make a difference. So you can use me wherever you go. But Lord, when I go on vacation, I, I, you know, that's my time. I'm going to go on vacation. And a few years ago, the Lord, uh, through the Holy Spirit, because that's how he speaks to us, by his Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. He rebuked me about that. He said, does the word of God say, when does the word of God say preach the word? It says, in season and out of season. You know what in season is? That, that, that's when you feel like it. And out of season is when you don't. In season is when you're on the job. You know how the people, that's like a, you know, that's like, that's like a cop. You ever seen these movies where the guy, he, he, he said, hey, you, he's like, on the job, you know, I'm on. but then sometimes you got a, a robbery going on and he's off duty. He's an off duty police officer. Now, how would you like that guy, a guy got a, a knife to your throat and the guy said, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm off, the, off the clock right now. I'm sorry, but I, I know I got a gun and I can help you and everything, but I'm off duty right now. The devil is a lie. Yeah. How would you like uh, uh, being somewhere? Uh, and all of a sudden you choking and everything else and you know like I said, is there a doctor in the house? Yeah, but you know I'm on vacation. I, I really can't. I'm sorry, but you know, I know you're dying. Looks like, oh yeah, well, it looks like you're going down for the third time. But I, it's like, you know, technically if you make an appointment, you know, that, you know. No! He's like, you're a doctor. Do no harm. Help him. Right? So I had this thing where I'm on vacation. I, I, I'm on vacation. Look, I, Lord, I just I minister seven days a week, all the time, every time, wherever it is needed. Ch child, let me tell you something. I realize that the point to my life is that God has anointed me. Yes, sir. Amen. Like that doctor. Amen. Like that police officer. Amen. Like that whoever. You know, and, and wherever I am, if there's a need, let me tell you something. We went to thanks to you all. Y'all blessed the pastor. The pastor uh, took that blessing and went on vacation, took my lovely wife on vacation. But I'm here to tell you that I led three people to the Lord this week while on vacation. Amen. And probably even more than that because we had a very, did the thing say signs and wonders? That's talking about spiritual experiences. 
we had a very, very spiritual experience, something like we never had before. We were in the pool, and uh, God just led us to this lady, and she was Catholic. Make a long story short, we started talking, but God showed me her face in the spirit. It was like somebody who was carrying a weight. She just was like, 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 a, like that woman bent over. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the woman that God yeah. said, woman now I'm loose. She was yeah. just bent over like this in the spirit. Yeah. And we're in the pool. And God just showed me. And I, we just stopped doing whatever we were doing. I thank God for a wife who allows me to work my ministry. Because she wasn't sitting there talking about, honey, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, I need a hot dog. She was just like, you know, staying there and helping me and doing that. But the woman was just looking so in bondage. And as I began to talk with her, I found out more about why she was that way. Do you realize these uh, religions are such that they put people in such bondage? For example, she had been married and uh, she got divorced. Now, I, don't, I didn't get into all the reasons that she got divorced, but more times than not, usually when a divorce happens, the man did something wrong. But I, I'm, and I'm not saying in every case, but a lot of times that's true. But she got divorced and uh, the Catholic Church told her, uh, well, now you know you can't take communion. Uh -uh. You, you're oh, a sinner. Uh -uh. Well, just kick a woman when she's down all then. You know, she's down, she's depressed, she needs the church to help her out. The woman's crying and everything else, and she just needs the priest wow. to come. It's like the, the story of the Good Samaritan lying on the, on the side of the street bleeding, and they said, oh, no, you can't have communion. You're a sinner. You 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 divorced. She was so burdened, and then I began to tell her about Jesus, Amen. and tell her about His mercy, and about His love, and His forgiveness, and and and, and the fact that no man can judge you. God has committed all judgment to Jesus Christ. Did you know that? John chapter eight. He said John chapter five. He says all judgment has been committed. In other words all this stuff about the confessionals. I said, you don't confess to them. Right. You confess to God. That's what you confess. You don't confess to a man. Right. I said, they need to be confessing to God. All the boys that they sleep and with the views and they're talking about, talking about you are a sinner and you can't take, you can't take communion. When the lady heard this, she was made free because the truth, when you know the truth, the truth makes you free. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. It was amazing what happened. It was amazing. She was there. She had her daughter-in-law who was there too. And her daughter-in-law was listening in. And then I started to, I said, this is for you too. Before it was all over, make a long story short, that woman was hugging us in the pool. I mean, we did things nice, like uh -huh. this kind of hug, you know, decent order. But it was, I just never experienced things like that. Yeah, we were in this pool. pool. Huh? Every time we saw her. Yeah, but yeah, she had received Christ into her heart. She had been, she, it, that, she, was, she got baptized, kid. You got that right. She got baptized. She was, it was amazing. She was in the pool. And because we obeyed God to tell her, that woman, I mean, it was like she was free. She was crying in that pool. I mean, it was amazing. We were in the pool. We were hugging this woman and everything. She cried. Then her daughter-in-law came and her daughter-in-law came on over. They were hugging everything. Then, then, then we got out the pool. She was telling us about her son. Then we met him and then he was receiving the Lord. Then her sister the next day. It was just an amazing thing the whole time. What am I trying to tell you? Okay, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Matthew chapter 5, here we go. What will happen if we will take hold to what God said? Look what he said. This brings the scripture to a whole other light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. Yeah. When Jesus said this, they weren't the light of the world. This is a prophetic statement. Right. The Bible says in John chapter 8, Jesus says long, chapter 9, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. But now he's gone. So he was right when he prophesied it because he said, I got to leave and then you got to take the baton and you're going to have to be the light of the world. The Bible says when the church is raptured, there will be no more light in the world. And that's why, that's when the end. So you don't have to worry about the Antichrist. Because what's sustaining the Antichrist right now is us. Did you hear what I said? With the prayers of the righteous and the Holy Spirit in the world. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy 
Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, is in the earth today because he's in the body of Christ. Yeah. That's what's restraining the Antichrist. But when we get taken out, you better go, hey, that's it. Hell, all hell's going to break loose. But here he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. He says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. What am I trying to tell you? Verse 16, he says, let your light, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Yeah that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Question, when you step into a room, does the light come on? When you around somebody else, does the light come on? You, that your light, you are the light of the earth. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Everywhere you go, you, your light should be shining. I'm not talking about entertaining folks. I'm not talking about just making jokes. I'm talking about the light and the power of Christ should be shining. If somebody's sick, Child, lay hands on them. If somebody's depressed, child, pray for them. If somebody needs a word of encouragement, you encourage them. If somebody has questions, you better have some answers. We are Christ in the earth now, you all. And listen, there should be no reason for people to say to you, oh, we need some help in the church. We need you to help in the church. You are the servants, the living light servants of the Lord. Where you have been empowered to make a difference. God bless those young people back in the children's church. They need a little more help, but guess what they're doing? They're making a difference. They're letting their light shine for the next generation. Church, we have the anointing of God to be a blessing. Don't worry about a blessing coming to you yeah. because when you become a blessing, a blessing always be coming back to you. Give the Lord a hand praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is what it's all about. Anointed to be a blessing wherever you go. My time is up. In the next weeks and months, it's called summer. It starts in just a couple of weeks, right? Summer starts, what, June 21st? Yeah. You're going to have opportunities like you can't even believe. You're going to be at barbecues, and you're going to be at birthday parties, and you're going to be at weddings and funerals, and you're going to be on vacation, and, and, and you're going to remember this. And you're going to remember what Pastor said. And you're going to learn from my example and my experience. And don't you be sitting back there, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian uh, uh, in season. No, you're going to be a Christian in season and out of season. You're going to be a Christian all the time. You know, I'm not talking about whether or not you could have a glass of wine or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that you are who you are. You are Christ. You're his body. And there is a, the world is dark. It's dark, it's dark, it's lost and dying, yeah. and you are the light, child of God. I'm trying to tell you, uh, if you ever have noticed, if you've ever noticed, I don't have my cell phone open, but if you ever noticed, I'm going to reach for it. If you ever notice how a little light is, yes. when the atmosphere is bright, you don't notice it. But as soon as you turn the lights off, like, like when I turn the lights off in my bedroom, we got this little, uh, the, the spectrum box or whatever. Yeah. That thing has a light on it and light the whole room at night. I'm like, I don't need a night light, nothing else when I have to go to the bathroom at night. Why? Because light shines greatest in the dark. These are dark times. And you are the light. And God wants you to shine. He doesn't want you to just sit back He's blessed you to be a blessing. I, I want to I wanna challenge you all. I want to challenge you from the depth of my heart with something that's very important. I want you to make a, a pact with yourself. This is the least you can do. This is the least you can do. I want you, before this year is out, to lead somebody to the Lord. Oh, yeah. this, is, this, is, this, is, this is like bargain basement, lowest level that I can think of. I can say three, I can say five, I can say ten. I'm saying one. Just one. Just one. You say, well, I don't know how to do that. Then, then, then just stick around me. You'll, you'll find out. We'll have discipleship classes this month. You'll find out how to do it.
but before this year is out. And some of you, some of you, where God has gifted you and positioned you, he's positioned you. Yeah, a little easy to read that. God has positioned you to be in a place where you meet a lot of people. Why do you think he did that? Because he's empowered you to be a blessing. And I know, I know you are. But I'm going to tell you right now, God has not put me in that kind of marketplace. You guys get me mostly here. But it doesn't matter because where there's a will, there's a way. When I go, I, everywhere I go, I never, really everywhere I go. And you know what? It starts with things like, it starts with things like this. It starts with things like this. I always have a track on me. This, the track is not the thing that, that makes the difference. It's you. Yeah. Making, the track is a tool yeah. to just engage the person in conversation. The young guy came to our room. He was delivering the uh, towels, just more towels. My, my boss likes to get the towels right away. And I talked to the young man. I said, hey, what's your name? He said, my name is Joel. Name of a prophet. I can see the light all on this young man. He's 19 years old. My wife saw it too. She said, she said, honey, did you see that? I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Led him to the Lord. He just, it was so, he just, you know why? Because all you have to do is ask God to send the people to you or have them cross your path more ready to receive. It's not about you. It's not hard. It's not about, I got to do this. No, 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 no. All you got to do is ask. God, who do you want me to help? It's a, it's a mindset. It's a change of the way that we're conditioned in America to, to, to take and to get right. rather than to give, right. to give. Your life is to give. Right. You're to give and to help. And when you do that, you'll never want for anything. Amen. Nothing, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk around. And give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> so here's about I just go say to pray. Father, we never want to take it for granted that everybody under my voice knows the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to give people an opportunity online and offline to do that. I want to lead you to the prayer of salvation. In fact, yes, yes. For those of you who say, I don't know how to lead anybody to the Lord, then get the blue track. Get the blue track. You say, I don't know how to lead anybody to the Lord. I made your job easy. Get this track today and study it and you will know. You will know. It's easy. And back the salvation prayers in there. Back you somewhere. You say, I don't know how to lead you by the Lord. So you, you find out they want to uh, say the prayer of salvation. You just open it up. You go right to the prayer of salvation and just say, repeat after me. It's easy. Thank you. Repeat after me, please. Thank you. Say it with me. Everybody, just to encourage one another. Everybody say it with me. Say, God, God please forgive me, please me for my sins. For my sins. I, believe I believe that you sent your son. That you sent your son. Your only born son, your only born son Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, to die, to die and, pay the price and pay the price for my sin. For my sin. He, did he did that. He died. He, died. he was buried. buried. And on the third day, the third you day. raised him from the dead, from to, the prove dead. The to prove that he's the Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus my, heart my heart is open. Come into my heart. Come into my Be my Lord and Savior. Lord. And I promise to love and serve you for heaven. Because of my confession and belief, I am saved. I am perfectly forgiven. I'm a child of the Most High God. I can call God Father now. And when I pray to my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Because that's the name that gives me access to the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're out there uh, online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, you meant it from your heart, then you got born again. And uh, if you'd like to know more about this life in Christ, there's information on the screen where you can contact us and we'll send you some information. We can help you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask the church to please stand. Walk in the room like God sent you. Hey.
walk in the room like God sent you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You got to know who you are. Mm -hmm. You got to yeah. understand that you are God's representative mm -hmm. and be sensitive to see who is it that I'm who, do, who is it that I'm supposed to bless today? How am I supposed to get? When we leave here today, we have several places we're going to go. And everywhere we're going to go, we're going to go and be a blessing to somebody. We're going to go see our sister, Abe. By the way, you all keep her in prayer. Yeah. She her, broke her leg, and she's in a full leg cast. And they say it's going to be about three months, so we're going to go minister to her. We're going to go try to visit our dear sister, Gussie, uh, who's been fighting illness and things, and see her. Etc. 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 Go try and see your mom. Minister to her. Take us some food. What am I trying to tell you? This is the Christian life, y'all. I'm not telling everybody that you have to uh, quit your job like I did, and become a full time pastor. But you you should be understanding that you are the Lord's servant. You work for God, and you'll never want for anything when you work for God. So, if there's anybody here today, I see mostly members of the church. If there's anybody here today, uh, praise the Lord. I think everybody is a member. Praise God. Well, here's what we're going to do. Here. Our new members are back. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. We're so glad about that. Yeah. These young people, listen to me. These young people's lives have changed already because somebody gave a track. I believe it was Janice. Was it a woman? It was Janice because I contacted her. And I said, Janice, did you give a young uh, couple of tracks at, uh, at the mall? And she said, yeah, that was me. <laughs> so look at that. Hey, who can tell me this? Who can tell me this? What is the one thing of everything that you can do in life, what is the one thing that you can do that makes all of heaven rejoice? Bring to bring somebody to the Lord. That, that's, the, that's the only way in the Bible where it says all of heaven, I mean, they all rejoice because, you know, God and Christ are up there. But I'm talking about what anything we do. Well, we lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Praise the Lord, but it doesn't say that all heaven rejoices for that. It says when we lead somebody to the Lord. You know why? Because that's eternal. That's eternal. So we have all members here. Um, let's look right here. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus for fresh anointing on everybody today. We know that this is Pentecost Sunday. It's not a coincidental day. This is a providential day. And I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would come down and fall down fresh on everybody under this minister's voice. Fresh anointing, Lord God. I believe, declare, and decree that this message has been a life-changing one to people to help them see things differently. In fact, the more we focus on other people's problems, the less we you know, remember that we have any. Fresh anointing, fresh power to go and to be a blessing. You are empowered to be a blessing to others. And there's no, there's no shame and no fear. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of selfishness. I bind the spirit of fear of rejection or fear of what people would say or fear of, of, of what is that word? Uh, uh, of societal norms. Of, oh, I can't do this because of that. I can't do this. I was with somebody and the lady said, I can't uh, uh, receive the Lord right here because of my job or whatever. And I said, hey, they don't know what we're talking about. And she received the Lord right there. Amen. Amen. I said, I don't care. I don't care. I pray the spirit of I don't care on each and everybody under my voice that just wants to go out and be and do good. How Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit, going about to do good. Each and every one, fresh anointing to go out today and every day and do good and watch God bless you, God, what you can imagine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. um, Oh, the bazaar is next week. So everybody, all vendors, contact Sister Yolanda. Next week we're having our Christian bazaar, which is great because that'll give you the opportunity to, to buy gifts for Father's Day, uh, which will be coming up. And this is first Sunday. So here's what we want to do. We want to take up another offering. 
It's an over and above offering. You all know we do an over and above offering uh, once a month. We only do it once a month, preferably. And uh, we're going to do it today. So you may be seated. And this is a good opportunity for you to just search your heart and see what the Lord would say to you. How, how, now again, tithe is set by God. That's a set amount by God. That's 10% of your growth. But guess what? The offering is set by you. So, and, and Pastor Tucker is not like other pastors. I don't tell you how much to give. The only thing I've ever told you is if we ever had a special project, if I told you what we needed to reach that amount and we, how we could reach that amount, but I'm not, I don't tell you how much to give. You give as you purpose in your heart. I believe that. As God, there's two things that should dictate how you give. As how much God has prospered you and also what you purpose or decide in your heart. Those are two things that determine how much you give. God has blessed me this much. Well, I, want to, I want to be a blessing. Or I know what my finances are. This is what I believe I can give at this time. Praise the Lord for that. But remember this. Always remember this because teaching is very important. Remember that uh, this church believes the word of God. It says tithe and offering. A tithe is a set amount. Your offering is over and above your tithe. Once you learn how to tithe, again, God sets that. Then you decide what your offering is, and that's over and above your tithe. Now, you may have given, off, given an offering today already. Praise God. But I'm asking at the beginning of this month that we give even more because, uh, again, we know we have natural obligation. And uh, what a blessing it is to give to God. So great to give. So great to give to the Lord. I know my wife is back there and she's getting it prepared for me even now. Praise the Lord. So great to give. That's to get my phone back. I can do it myself, huh? I gotta watch Alicia. She, she'll go home and she'll be like, praise the Lord. No, I'm just kidding. I'm asking you, Alicia. She knows that. She understands the pastor. She knows that's a place. 